because in my education happened from working in the bank because I've been working in the bank so long. So I learned like personal finances, you know, uh, how mortgages work, how every like um, taxes and, and all of that stuff because I worked in the bank. So it, you could choose to learn from where you work, not just your particular profession, but the company itself. And even when I was in, with the startup, I learned how a whole business works. Welcome to the Leaders in Tech podcast. I have created this podcast to honor the leaders in technology that are helping change, change in this world for a better place. Everybody looks at technology, everybody uses technology, everybody loves technology, but no one knows what it takes to get that technology done. And basically, without amazing leaders in our organizations, we wouldn't have everything that we're enjoying right now as, as, as humankind. Because if you guys think about it, Technology runs our lives, isn't it? Since the day that we wake up to the to the time that we go to bed, everything is run by technology. So today we have with us a, an amazing guest, Malik. Brother, welcome to the show. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Malik, for the audience, can you please tell me what's your full name? Where do you live and what do you do for a living? So my full name is Malik Arafin. Um, I live in Toronto, Canada. Um, and uh, my current role is uh, I'm Director of Emerging Technologies for uh, AML Technology in CIBC. Wonderful. So for people who don't know, CIBC is one of the uh, top uh, five banks in Canada, multi-billion dollar organization that it's uh, actually international. Uh, so having the place that you have now, I know it takes a lot of wisdom, courage and leadership. So Malik, tell me a little bit more about what you do for, for the bank. Uh, how are you adding value with your team? Um, so my current team, basically what we do, we're, we're, it's, it's an application development team. So we, we build software essentially uh, for the AML investigators. So what the AML investigators um, do uh, basically is um, they compile all of the bank's transactions and then try to find anomalies in the transactions and, and, and try to basically find AML activities and then report it to uh, the government and, and the right authorities. So so there's around 600 investigators that actually um, do these uh, uh, daily. So they need various sets of tools, data, um, uh, you know, uh, algorithms. Uh, so my team essentially works with the business that uh, works with the investigators to determine what tools are needed. And then we kind of build those tools for them. What does the MLA uh, stands for? Sorry, anti-money laundering. Oh, anti-money laundering. So you basically, you guys are the cops, uh, the cops, the good guys <laughs> yeah. uh, that are searching for people, bad people that are using institutions. Exactly, to, to so mainly, exactly, human trafficking and, and, and terrorist terrorism activities are, are big, big top ones on our list. And does that happen in Canada, brother? Like I've been living in Canada for 33 years now, and this is one of the most peaceful countries in the world. Do we um, have human We might not have the actual trafficking, but the money might funnel through some of the banks, right? So that's what we're trying to actually catch. So even though we might not experience the actual activities, but the money, wherever there's banks, there's, there's money being uh, flown through somehow. So we try to make sure we are not um, involved with those type of uh, clients. It's incredible. I don't know if you're aware, but a movie just came out about human trafficking and it's just raising all kinds of awareness of the huge global problem that that is, right? It is. It, it is a big global problem. And and um, the, the, the problem that happens is a lot of the times these uh, organizations are very smart in how they move their money around. So it's hard to track um, and, and kind of figure out that this is happening. And uh, what happens is the banks end up getting huge fines. So we're also trying to not get those big, big fines as well, right? It's fascinating, uh, Malik, because as Canadians, you know that everything gets triangulated with your social insurance number. Exactly. So if I go to a bank and I make a large deposit in my bank account, the government knows right away. Yeah. Um, uh, so everything like oof, this country socialized, right? So they yeah. know what you're doing all the yeah. time. It's like the big, the big brother is already there with the huge eye watching everything. And I can't believe these bad people can still bypass those Oh, they have many creative ways of doing things, right? You have 
prepaid credit cards. They're, they they can they can essentially hijack people's IDs. There's lots of creative ways of, of, of them doing things. So our job is to stay on top of those uh, uh, activities and then figure out what they've figured out and then uh, kind of stop those uh, things from happening. And, and well, we're, we don't actually, you know, um, shut off the account or anything like that, but we, we usually, we, we have um, obligation to report to, to a FinTrack, which is the organization in Canada that uh, actually does all of the work when it comes to financial tracking. So I guess from there, FinTrack will have to involve our version of the FBI, which is the Yeah, RCA, exactly, right? exactly, exactly. They make that decision. So, and, and the, the issue is if we don't report it and then something does happen and, and they find out that we didn't report it, that's how we the banks get fined. And that's it, it, applicable to all the banks. It's not just CIBC, it's, it's all the banks in Canada. Uh, tell me, uh, Malik, uh, how big is the problem? Are we talking millions of dollars a year? We're talking billions. Billions? Yeah. Billions of dollars a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. So your job is so important. Like, you know, that's why I wanted to, to interview you, uh, Malik. Like, you're leading a, a, a team of developers creating technology to prevent crime. Yeah. Imagine how, I can only imagine how good you must feel at the end of the day saying what I did today matter. And because of what we're doing, we're making it very hard or almost impossible for these bad people to do these horrible crimes. Yeah, that, that is the key. And then and I, I always encourage my team and my developers to, to kind of think of it that way that, you know, your, your two lines of code that you might think that uh, didn't matter actually has a big impact in, 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 in a lot of things, right? So um, uh, it, it's inspirational if you look at it that way for from a, a team perspective that, you know, we're, we're contributing to something that, that actually matters. That's amazing. Without without breaking any disclosures, yes. what, what has been the, 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 like the, the hardest case that you ever seen? Maybe something that is already public and people know about. Um, we, well... That I can't really disclose the detail, but I mean, I don't really get to see the actual um, cases themselves. So what happens is we build the tools and the tools are get sent to the investigators and they flag. Uh, they use the tools to do do the actual investigation. So we are not actually seeing the um, the data or the actual uh, cases. So we know the criteria that are given to us like this is these are the uh, rules that you want to apply so we build the applications and the tools based on those rules and then investigators actually because um, we don't want our developers and BAs to have access to client data because that is of also course. Of, of course yeah. a big, big privacy big right privacy. yeah exactly. well, so, as you may know i run a, a very successful software consulting firm and uh, yeah. we we do all kinds of uh, high level software for different uh, entities and uh, for us security and privacy yes. is the concern to yeah. the point that we develop like our development environments are completely separated from even testing right yeah, yeah. and our data is only it's only mock data um, yeah exactly so it's totally free to build the algorithms yeah so you must uh, you must work the same way right um, yeah we're right? exactly the same way it's very very um secure in terms of what who has access to what data we have we have an information security team that that actually manage that manages that separately. So we have to do attestations regularly. We have to make sure who has access to what. So that's a big, and then you know in the banks everything is is uh, they have uh, big processes around all of that stuff, right? So so we uh, sometimes it it makes our lives a little bit. I don't want to say difficult. Challenging is the right word because you know you want to. You want to build the right tools, and it sometimes is, is difficult to to kind of maneuver all the information security uh, paradigms. But it's 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 important, right? So we we don't want to get um, hit with an in, information security violation in, in trying to prevent um, AML crimes. So it's it's a double-edged sword, right? For sure, uh, Malik. To get where you are, it has taken a lot of dedication. Like I said in the beginning. And uh, you look like you're 29. I'm, I know you're much older <laughs> than that, but you're very young. Yeah. Tell me, what's the secret to your success? How did you make it to, to where you are right now? Um, I actually started my career in, in a bank. So I started in TD, which is another um, big fan. So right, uh, I, it, my first co-op term when I was in university was with uh, with TD Bank. And that, this is back, I'm not going to date myself, but it was around the dot-com era uh, time, right? So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so things were very different back then. You know, we were allowed to do lots of crazy things, so you play mean with 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um and um yeah, Y2K around Y2K. So I that's so that was my when I started kind of so I my first year so um, I got a co-op job as a web developer, so that was that was my first first uh, job in, in uh, building websites for the bank, right? So we were, I was working on um, and TD had gone through a merger with Canada Trust, so it was TD was separate back then. So the big project that I worked on was build combining the two websites. Right? So that that's how I started, and then I went off and um, worked for a startup for a little bit couple of years because mm. you want to want to see the difference right <laughs> how was that okay this this is great this is where all the this juiciness comes in i tell you yeah for me startups are the hardest thing yes. in the world yeah i you know probably 10 15 percent of my clients are startups we we very you select them very very carefully they have yeah. to be well funded and we have to believe in their idea and the yeah. business yeah, yeah. and yeah. uh but having said that, though, you know, we worked for a startup that went to the stock market and we actually got stock before yeah, exactly. they went to the stock market. So, yeah. but I tell you, like nine out of 10 startups fail and yeah. working in a startup. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Tell me your experience. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was a unique experience, you know, working 70 hours a week and uh, and, and just uh, but I think what that's where I learned a lot of uh, uh do's and don'ts of, of, of development, uh, not like taking shortcuts and not taking shortcuts, but having worked in the bank, it was kind of uh, coming into a startup was a complete opposite experience, right? So the freedom of it was great in the beginning, but then um, I kind of missed some of the structure that was in place because um, there were like, when you work in a bank, you don't wor worry about security. There's a separate team taking care of that. But when, when you're in the startup, I'm the only developer, so I have to take care of everything, right? And and uh, like, oh, you know, who's going to deploy my code? No, you have to deploy the code, right? <laughs> 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 so, so those type of things I wasn't used to. Um, and I did that for a couple of years, but I learned a lot. And uh, mm. then I came back to the bank as a consultant. Uh, CIBC. So I started, I came back as a consultant um, uh, and then I moved into online banking. I worked there as a developer for a while. Um, and then from from there, from there, I think I found an interest in managing people. Like I realized that I was kind of, I liked mentoring uh, young uh, developers and then just providing guidance. And um, so I moved to a completely different uh, team. I moved to a marketing team. Um, basically, but I was managing uh, developers and designers, so mm -hmm. uh, it was part for of the marketing. business. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so for, so it was it wasn't like a technology team. So I was the technology guy in a marketing team. So it, it was actually uh, CIBC Asset Management. So they, we were in the marketing team. So I learned how sales and marketing works um, uh, from there as well, uh, and then. I decided I wanted to come back to development. So then, then I came back to capital markets as a consultant. Um, and from there, after six months of, of running, uh, kind of working with that team, I got offered a, a, a leadership role, a director role. And, and then I did uh, capital markets was a very unique experience because I was running data sales business. So we were selling data to, to vendors, which was, it was uh, pricing data. It was bond pricing data. Um, and so it was a revenue generating business. So that money kind of funded my team. So I worked independently. I was running a small business within the bank. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Right. So you were managing budgeting and you got to, you had to make sure that you were making profits. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then we ended up selling that business to another uh, company. So I was involved in the sale of that business as well, um, you know, with the lawyers. And, and after that, I moved to uh, the, the fraud and AML, which was a couple of years ago. That's, congratulations. That's a beautiful story. If, if you have a like a 25 year old developer that maybe has one or two years experience, and this kid wants to become a director in a large bank, what would yeah. you, what advice would you give this person? I would say um, decide what what area uh, you want to kind of focus on. So it's also it's not just about development, but it's it's developing those personal skills and and understanding how. Um, 
you inspire people and, and also just kind of developing those people's skills. So understanding if, because a lot of people want to be that director, but then they realize as they start doing more and more work that that's not the direction they want to go in because um, it's really about people management and people skills, right? I don't want to say people management, but people skills, really, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's, you have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy, um, like a lot of the times I've seen uh, people that, used to work for me, gone and uh, gone, move on and, and gone into leadership roles and are doing great now. And, and you have to feel a sense of pride in, 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 in that, right? So I, th I think um, understanding how people work together uh, and in deciding if you are the right person to do that kind of stuff going forward is, is the key. You know, that's so, that's so true. And there is nothing worse, and mark my words, there is nothing yeah. worse than decided to become a leader just because you're going to get a pay raise yeah. uh, or a salary increase. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. leadership is one of the toughest, mm -hmm. most important roles in any organization. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's why I like talking about leadership in this podcast, yeah. not necessarily the technology. I mean, technology, yeah. there's tons of podcasts that talk yeah. about technology and yeah. everything regarding, um, you know, dev stacks and, you know, all you know, all the different yeah. things that we have, like AI and blockchain, yeah. but the leadership part. That's the key. Yeah. Oh, man. yeah. So two things that I will I will say is, if you are a coder and you have this natural ability to become a leader, you have to go for it. Exactly. But if you're a coder and you have a natural ability to stay being a coder, or maybe become a senior architect or you know, yes, yeah. architect, stay that way because yeah. if you force yourself and it's not for you. I mean, yeah. like, it's hard enough hard. to lead yourself. Imagine leading other people and you're still responsible for their performance. Oh, you're responsible for motivating them, for making sure they're doing a good job and in a secure way. And you're also responsible for their for their well-being. Yeah, right? yeah. The emotional part, I think, uh, to, uh, the emotional well-being as well, right? So um, the, the way I always look at it, I always treat people the way I, I like to be treated myself, right? So that's that's the simplest way. And one of the other things I tell some of my guys is, don't chase the salary, chase what you want to do. The money will come. Mm -hmm. right? So the Wow. That, Malik, if people knew that, yeah. if I would have known that 10 years, 20 years ago, I would have exactly. saved myself a lot of headaches yeah. because yeah. all we do is look at the dollars, yeah. thinking that the money will make us happier. No, no, I remember no, all I wanted to have is a sports car. Once I got yeah. the sports car, it was awesome. Yeah. But then it, two months later, it felt the same as the old that? car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I felt the same way when I got a, a fancy car. So after two months, it's it's the same thing, right? So right. So you quickly <laughs> realize the money doesn't fulfill you. Yeah. So why yeah. would you pursue the money? Pursue your God-given ability yeah. and give it your best because your God-given ability is set in your heart to bless other people. That's how, and it's funny because if you actually do that, your money will increase automatically. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's a universal law, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I got lucky. I guess it's something my mom taught me was that, you know, don't chase the money. Uh, just make sure, obviously, you, you, you don't want to work at McDonald's. Well, not that there's anything wrong with that, right? So, right. <laughs> but, but for, so, but, you know, focus on what you're good at and then the money will, will kind of follow itself. Yeah, and then you will have a very pleasant life because yeah, that's the thing exactly. for me. I, I even had a heart attack chasing money. That's yeah. how bad I got because that's, once that's greed takes good. over over you, you're done. Oh, that's the key. Greed. You use the this. right word. Greed is the is, is the word uh, that that we kind of and it, everybody everybody has to goes through it. It's it's a journey, right? And it you just uh, it, it it depends on when you realize it. Hopefully, it's not too late when you realize that, right? <laughs> what point when you go for computer science at school? What? Why did you get this passion for computers? I was always um, so I I uh, so to go back to the story. So when I was maybe twelve years old, my my father bought me a two eighty six. You know, uh, <laughs> so I started. I just don't uh, remember a two eighty six. Yeah, yeah, two eighty six. <laughs> right, so. He had got it, it was like in his office, they were getting rid of older computers. So he had a 286 that nobody wanted. So he brought it home. Um, and, and this is actually not even in Canada. This is back in Bangladesh, which where where, um, where my family's from. So I only moved to Canada when I was 15 years old. So this is in, in yeah, 15. Yeah, you have no accent. 
I moved when I was 19 and I got a you know, big accent. Yeah, I think that, that year of high school kind of changed, right? So, right. Um, yeah, and uh, so I started playing around and then I had an uncle who started computer science. So he showed me you know, like DBase 4, right? <laughs> and, and, and quick basics. So I started playing around with it and I really enjoyed it. So, I think when I was 13 or 14, I did, I created a piece of software which was to manage the report cards in the system. In my idea, in my head, it was like if I built a software, I can put in some kind of hack that I will always get an A, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> good motivator, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I it, even uh, before I w went to high school, I knew that that's like I enjoyed programming. So I would I would build little tools like I would you know on take the computer apart. I didn't have a sound card, so I would take take the speakers and try to connect it to an amplifier and, and, and stuff like that so we can, you know, listen to the music louder from the computer. Um, so when when I came to Canada, it was it was natural that I would just go study computer science. There was I didn't really even think of there was there wasn't any other option uh, uh, for me. <laughs> It's That's so, beautiful because you fell you fell in love with your passion even before you went to university. You know how yeah. lucky you are, how blessed yeah. I will say, because I don't believe yeah. in luck, I believe in blessings. Uh, you, you're a blessed man. And I was the same way. I was very similar, yeah. right? I, yeah. I fell in love with computers because I didn't want to learn how to use the typewriter. Remember yeah. the typewriter? Yeah, exactly. Even before your age, man. Yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> I'm like, why do I have to repeat the whole page if I make one mistake? So my uncle was a computer scientist. He was a VP of a large bank BP yeah. for IT and he took me to the data center and he showed me my first uh, word processor and I fell in love with the automation yeah, and I was 15 exactly. years old just like yeah, you right yeah yeah and from there you know everything is history but you know most it, people it's the problem history. solving part I think uh, you fall in love with right solving a problem yeah. <laughs> solving the problem and automating it making yes, it easy exactly. you're making it right? easy yeah, I, yeah. I was telling my kids all the time, I'm a software scientist because I'm a lazy dude. I just want to do that's, that's, It comes from the laziness, no? exactly. Right? Like, <laughs> that is, now it's not laziness, it's just having massive value, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how many people go to university and they have no idea what they want? I know, I see that all the time. I see that all the time. And, and, and for me, like I want, I, it wasn't even going to university, I wanted to work. So my goal of going to university was to get into that co-op program. So I never went back full time. So when, as soon as I got that uh, uh, job, co-op job, I finished university. I did went back to university part time. So my goal was to work. <laughs> That's beautiful. So you stayed yeah. in the co-op program. You yeah. they hired you full time, and then you went back to university part time. Yeah. So after my That's first so co smart. Two, two co-op terms, they offered me a full time job, and I said, okay, you know. Three more years of university, I can do it in six years if I, you know, finish yeah. it part time or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, I never went back full time after that. You know what you did? You worked three years ahead of the rest of your competition. Exactly. Yeah, right? and that's exactly what happened. So uh, my friends were graduating, and I already had three years of experience. Right. So. <laughs> right. No, it's beautiful, and uh, if people can hear, this is why I made this podcast. Yeah. You know, if one person advances their life dramatically because they are listening to you and me. Yeah this podcast is paid. Like, yeah. the, I know there's going to be a kid that is about to start their first co-op program and he's yeah. going to listen to your advice or she's going to listen to your advice and they're going to get just into a full-time situation. Just make sure you finish your degree though. There is something... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very finish, important. Right? That's that's important. That's that's the advice you want to give people, right? So, and and I noticed, I, I do hire a lot of co-op students. I, I, I actually... Not in this role, but in my previous role, I'd actually go down to uh, University of Waterloo and I spend the day like just talking to the students. And, and I find a lot of them are um, trying to figure out what they want to do, right? So that's, that's they think the co-op term is going to help them. So I guess we were lucky in, in the sense that we knew this is what we want to do. We just wanted yeah. to do it. Right? So, so I just wanted to uh, write yeah. code. Right? Yeah, I just wanted to automate things. I just wanted that's to make it. life simpler that's for it. other people. That's and it. for that's myself. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and even in, even when I was in school, at university, you have to take the other courses, right? Like history and and, and, and literature. I was like, I don't. Why? Why do I have to take these courses? I just want to code and I just want to go work and do. Coding. <laughs> so you learn later on that that just that makes you a well more well-rounded person, right? So that's important. Well, you know, as I'll well. tell you a beautiful story about that. So I went through college. Uh, unlike you, I I went through college at night because I already had. Uh, two kids when I was in school. Yeah. So I, I started my life very young and uh, 
I was here in Canada doing my second degree. I had my first computer science degree back in Guatemala. But okay. back in the 90s, nobody would look at me as a developer here. So mm-hmm. I had to go back to school here. So um, I was doing a full-time career while working full-time. And that was very yeah. hard. But I tell you this still because uh, every class that I took was important, but I didn't like them. To your yeah. point, like I love all the programming uh, yeah, courses. Yeah, I yeah. love all the networking, the, the, even the computer theory course, the theoretical courses. I love the logic courses, the math courses. But you know, when they started with accounting, yes, and they started yeah. with, uh, business communications, English. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. But you know, my grandfather was, a, was an accountant. He was a chartered accountant. And he told me, when you go through college in Canada, make sure you take as many accounting courses as you can. And I'm like, why, Grandpa? And yeah. He said, most likely you're going to be writing code for commerce. Yes. <laughs> I, I know you, you are not, a, even though you are a computer scientist, yeah, you are yeah. going to commerce solving problems for commerce. You're not going to write code to create a new microprocessor, right? You're yeah, not going to yeah. write code for, for like low exactly, levels. Exactly, exactly, right? exactly. So he yeah. says, if you're going to be in the world mm-hmm. of commerce, get a lot of accounting. And I took seven courses in accounting. I did a minor in accounting, actually. That's great. Yeah. And now I thank God because my it, whole it, career, it helps. my company, ISU Corp, FinTech is one of yeah. the, you know, one of the strong, yeah. the, the strong pillars is FinTech. Yeah, and it's of course, all around of course. finance and accounting, right? Yeah. No, and I, I, mean, I actually say this to a lot of my people. So my education happened from working in the bank because I've been working in the bank so long. So I learned like personal finances, you know, uh, how mortgages work, how every like um, taxes and, and all of that stuff, because I worked in the bank. So it, you could choose to learn from where you work, not just your particular profession, but the company itself. And even when I was in, with the startup, I learned how a whole business works, right? Like, you know, how shipping works and, and, and how all of that stuff, like when someone puts in order. So I was running their e-commerce site, but I had to understand when they put the order through the e-commerce, there's a shipment house and you know, there's a bill of lading stuff. So so you have to kind of focus on when you're working on something, the, the bigger picture as well. Right? Yeah. You know, what I tell kids nowadays in computer science, I tell them, if you want to be a great coder and eventually a leader, learn a lot of financial systems. Yes. yes. Uh, accounting thing, how finance works and also learn workflows yes if you workflows. know how to create an efficient workflow and That's you have accounting thing. on top of that you have your whole tech stack of computer yeah. science you are done you are you're never going to be poor in your life <laughs> yeah you're already thinking analytically right so that's that you already have that advantage now you're going to have that knowledge and then you put it all together and and, and yeah that that that's very important for the kids <laughs> for sure and for everybody in life actually yeah, processes you know like I, I had a, one of my biggest business mentors she told me David marketing is everything and the marketing goes through sales but you told me something she said you told me that process automation is what actually makes the money happen because yeah. you can have all the marketing in the world all the sales and people that's the hardest thing but once you sell whatever it is that you're selling if you don't have a business process automation behind you're going to lose all kinds of money in operations and in production support. Yeah. Right? yeah. So process automation for me is everything. You know, I, I've been blessed to be running seven businesses now, and it's only because I go to a new business as a partner. I set the processes in place. I automate the processes, and, I, and then I let sales and marketing do their job and make sure finance knows that we're making money. And that's it. That's how you run a, a successful company. Yeah, that's that's the piece, right? Finance only cares if you're making money or not. <laughs> That's 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 yeah. the... <laughs> exactly. Hey, brother, yeah. if you had a, a time machine, yeah, you could back in time and you could talk to the twenty-one year version of you. What would you yeah. tell yourself? Oh, that's a, that's a very uh, that's a tough question. Um, I would I would say be patient. Uh, good things are about to happen. Just uh, don't don't want everything right now. It's true. Yeah. I think we all are like that. We are yeah. anxious for getting stuff done that we know we're built to do, but it doesn't yeah. happen. And you're like, oh. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. you're not ready yet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 there has been times where I've been, I've, and without using specific examples, maybe in personal life, where, where you're so anxious to move on to the next phase of your life. And 
and and you you do it, but you realize later on that you know it was ten years too early or, or whatever, something like that, right? You, you know, um, so I, you know, I'm a man of faith. I follow the yeah. Christian faith, and uh, in the Bible there is a psalm called Psalm 139, and this psalm says that every day of your life has been written in the book of the Lord before you were born. So he wrote your life before you were born. You still have free will, but he knows what you're going to do, right? Yeah, yeah. And that, I use that all the time as a reminder because even as a 51-year-old, yeah. you know, very successful person, like I'm blessed in all areas of my life. I get anxious sometimes still, you know? Oh, yeah. I cannot wait to achieve this many downloads in my podcast. Oh, I cannot <laughs> wait to do this. I cannot wait to do that. And then I remember, take it easy, be patient. The Lord has a plan for you and you're going to get there regardless as exactly. long as you apply yourself and you keep learning the lessons that you need to learn before you move on to your next step. Yeah, uh, that's the key, yeah. I think. Um, being a um, being true to yourself, like what you so you have to have your core values that you believe in. So don't deviate from those. That's one of the things I would always tell tell my, uh, if I went had a time machine and go back. It's like, okay, you have your set of core values. Maybe at some point there will be a chance to deviate from those values to to take a shortcut don't do that because you know if you do you might have uh, you might have short-term success but in the long term you're, you're gonna kind of regret it a big failure and you yeah, know yeah. it's true and most people that do that when they you sacrifice your values they yeah. do it for the love of money so exactly we go back to greed yeah yeah Isn't greed it? is always the, the the main culprit right so yeah you know i love life hacking right yeah so for me life hacking for the audience, if you guys don't know, is how do I get there faster by implementing strategies and workflows that will make me avoid the obstacles better, right? Yeah, yeah. That course. doesn't mean breaking my core values, though. Exactly, exactly. Right? There no, is I a fine line, it. right? There is a fine line, and you're completely right. Yeah, right. <laughs> what, what does, what, just think about this. Why yeah. would you, let's say, you're going to show, talking about your job, right? Yeah. Why would you actually do these horrible things on longer money. Exactly. When, even if you make, you know, $50 million, what does it matter if you're going to spend the rest of your life in a jail? Jail, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and also, like, think about uh, the, the actual outcome of, of what you're doing, right? <laughs> you yeah. uh, you've ended up in jail. That's just you, but all the other people that you're impacting. The damage. The damage, damage right? The damage, the right, yeah. Oh. That alone is, you know, that this this about the core values. That alone, brother, is this is yeah, incredible. yeah. Because I find when you have that, you sleep easier at night, like because you haven't, you're not thinking about like look, I, the, one of my one of the things that my friends always tell me is like, what you you can sleep anywhere, wherever. Like, how do you sleep so well all the time? It's like, well, because I don't think about things that I've done wrong in my life, right? So I could just yeah. I have that inner peace where I could just fall asleep. Yeah, and it's because number one, you're trying to respect your core values. And when you make a mistake, you ask yeah. forgiveness and exactly. you also forgive yourself. Yeah, you that's do those the key. things, you can sleep. I'm like you. I go yeah, to bed, yeah. I'm like, I have the yeah. beautiful night sleep. And sometimes I make big mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Not on purpose, right? Yeah. But that's when the I key. do, I ask for forgiveness right away. Or if somebody is doing something against me, I forgive yeah. them right away. Because yeah. Asking for forgiveness and, and, and forgiving yeah. is a way to release the problems. Yeah. No, that's and it, again coming back to the 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 you know the developers or, or your team. I always mention that to the younger guys is that you can't control other people's behavior. You can control your own behavior. So so focus on that and everything else will kind of make sense. Beautiful, Malik, brother. Thank you so much for being in the show. You have so much depth and knowledge. Uh, and wisdom and you were so kind to share it with the world thank um, you thank you david thanks for having before me before we finish the podcast i'll ask you yeah. one last question yeah if you have access to a, a billboard in the busiest highway on earth which for us is the Gardner yeah. expressway yeah what would you write it <laughs> oh big bill oh i mean uh give me one dollar so if everybody gave it to me then i'll be rich <laughs> I'll have my email address. <laughs> you, know? you know what? That is so funny, and it's actually true. Give me one dollar. <laughs> so you know, everybody rich. drives by. <laughs> I can tell you're in fintech. You yeah, know. Exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> remember that movie based on the true story that this guy was a coder and he put yeah. a he put yeah, it yeah, in the, the algorithm. Big, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, cents, right? Like it was less than cents. Every yeah, transaction like less than a penny. Yeah, yeah, it's the super band virus. That's what they call it. But I mean, all jokes aside, I, I, one of the messages I'd like to, like, I'd probably put is like, just love each other. That's that. That seems to be something that's lacking in this world now with all the things that are going on. But yeah, love I, each other. Yeah, exactly. It's true, bro. Love, yeah. love fixes everything. Exactly. This, this exactly. whole, this whole idea of forgiving, you know, and being forgiven is about love. It's about yeah. saying, you know, we're all humans. We make mistakes. Yeah, that's of course. It. That's right? it. Don't yeah. hold a grudge. You know, holding yeah. grudges gets people cancer. Yeah, that's that's so true. Bad that people get get sick and die. Yeah, 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 for sure. Malik, brother, thank you so much for your time. If people would like to get in touch with you or ask you more questions, maybe a top student or somebody in tech that yeah. want to grow as a leader, how can they find you? So they can find me on LinkedIn with my name, Malik Arafin. So if they just look me up on LinkedIn, they'll be able to find me, and, and I'm always happy to help any any uh, young upcoming. Um, students or co-op or any, anybody that wants any any knowledge, I'm, I'm happy to help. I like, actually enjoy that quite a bit. Fantastic. <laughs> Malik, thank you so much. God bless Thanks and have a wonderful rest of the, of the, of the week, actually. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Leaders in Tech podcast. Check in next week to keep learning how to use technology and leadership to change the game. See you next time.